here with uh, Billy Joe Saunders at Frederick's Restaurant in Islington. Uh, first of all, we spoke to you a couple of weeks ago. Um, how's uh, training and preparation been going since uh, we spoke to you last? Yeah, it's going all good. Um, been working hard, can't do any more than what I'm doing. Um, you know, I'll start me sparring next week. So, you know, looking onwards and upwards, really, for me. And, I mean, have you seen much more of your opponent since we last spoke to you? Yeah, just a little bit. seen a little bit of him. Um, you know, it was... Uh, it can be awkward, tricky, but nothing I ain't got in my armour to deal with. And, I uh, mean, after this, you're hoping to be um, number one for the WBO title, Peter Quillin. Uh, but there's been a change in a uh, champion in your division as well, with Felix Sturm losing his title um, this weekend. I mean, does that make things better for you? Uh, is that some, another title you've got your eye on? Um, not really. I, I've got to take one fight at a time, really. I'm not really looking at the WBO at the minute, because, for one, the fight's got to be made and for two where it's going to happen um, which don't make a lot of odds but if you want to be world champion you go to the backyard but I think that I've got a, a, t- a tough job ahead of me um, on the 26th so you know I'm thinking about that that's first, that's first and foremost in my mind then I'll think about you know what I'm going to do out of that I mean there's still a little um, a little thing I can't leave bro and that's the British title so I'm going to see what I'm going to go about and what am I going to do with that So, um, but I'm definitely going to defend it as far as I'm concerned, and just get it out right. I need one more, so I might just stop that and just do that very quickly. And uh, there's a race, obviously, between uh, you and Tyson Fury to become the first uh, traveller to win a world title. Uh, you mentioned in the press conference you're having a bit of a uh, laugh with him, you're talking to him regularly on the phone. I mean, is, there, is it just a lot of banter going on between you two? To who's going to win that first world title? Yeah, me and Tyson's good friends. Um, you know, if he was to win it before me, best of luck to him, and I'm sure he said the same about me. Um, but, you know, you've got to look realistically you know we're both knocking on the door now you know he's two fights away I'm potentially two fights away so you know we're, we're both knocking on the door and, and maybe if one of us can get it you know and just change things around for the community and I'm sure there's going to be lots of um, the travelling community up in Manchester on uh, the 26th of July for your fight and his fight how do you see um, his bout against Derek Chisora going this time round um, I think that Derek the first time he tell you himself coming overweight wasn't nowhere near his best, um, you know, and, 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 and him and Tyson, you know, Tyson clearly won the fight, but he's a different story now, he's got a dietitian, he's come in, he's in good shape, good health, and I think that's the reason why Tyson stuck the fight, because he knows he's a better Derek Dezora, and he wants to beat the best Derek Dezora, so fair play to Tyson, um, but fair play to Derek as well, to get yourself in a condition he has to, um, to, to, to fight Tyson, but, you know, I think it's going to be a tough fight, but I think Tyson's got the size, but this is one of them fights, you know, you can't really, I'm not really, I can't really pick. It's going to be a good fight though, I know that. And the uh, last time we spoke to you, we talked about some uh, d- uh, domestic fights that could possibly happen in your weight division. The uh, name that you mentioned, or was mentioned, was Chris Eubank Jr. and some of the things you said. He was supposed to be here today. What would have happened if um, he was here today and you were here today? Do you think it would have been a bit more heated than it was? I think... Definitely, um, from what's been said about on his behalf and my behalf, probably definitely be a bit more heated. I'll probably throw a glass over and hit him in the face with it, probably, or hit him in the other computer if I had a grab one. No, but listen, people keep, people, boxing fans, non boxing fans, keep asking me to get the fight. I've got 30 odd thousand or 30 thousand Twitter followers, whatever it is, Facebook, for every day people ask me to do it, and I'll say this again and again and again. You, you're a hard working average man out there working hard for his money then he puts his hand in his pocket to buy a ticket for 50 quid now come on that 50 quid can go on something else that he wants to go and watch you fight why not have the fight that not only one man wants but thousands of people want to see it you know and they're all hard working people so listen you know boxes are made by the, by, the, by the public the fans you know without the fans the show wouldn't happen and I think that oh, listen I'm the sort of fighter that I look at that because I know what it is like to struggle and whatever else and you know, they can't. They don't want to go and pay and watch you smash a bum over and, and that's it you're getting paid and they lost out on their 50 quid and you know they're going home and they haven't seen what they want to see they want to see Chris Bank get smashed up and I'm the man to do it and you mentioned um, before you go on to fight for a world title you'd like to defend that British title once to win it outright would that you would you like to do that against Chris Eubank Jr. just to prove your point? He, he's not British level. He ain't earned it. He got a mandatory, a, a man, uh, a ban, uh, he got made. Um, what was it? It was a uh, eliminator. Him and Nick Blackwell, and he pulled out. But he pulled out because Nick Blackwell smashed him up the sparring and dropped him five or six times, I think. 
um, I'm going to make some Nick back when I spoke to him. I think that Chris Eubank Jr. had to go to hospital as well. So that's all I heard. And uh, he wouldn't fight Nick Blackwell. So obviously Nick Blackwell got made mandatory. Um, funny enough, he's been made mandatory, but we're sparring a couple of weeks. Funny, weird, but listen, he's a mate of mine anyway. You know, best of luck to him. Um, but I think our very drummer ought to be British champion after me. But definitely not Chris Eubank Jr. He ain't good enough at it. He ain't British level. And do you, do you think, though, no, um, like you, you would like to obviously fight Chris Eubank Jr. just to give the British public what they want? And after Saturday night, where 80,000 people, Wembley Stadium, does that whet your appetite for these domestic British fights at the public one? Well, that, that is it. It's all about, listen, my boxing career. I'm British, Commonwealth, WBO Intercontinental, and soon to be European, and knocking on a door for a world title. Why, for my boxing career's sake, would I need to walk back down, look down and fight Chris Eubank Jr.? There'd be no point. There's no sense in it at all. But, like I said, somebody's working hard for their money, and a lot of people work hard to stand out for their money. It's hard. Some people's not even working and they still try and buy a ticket. So why not give them what they want to see? Simple as that. That's the sort of man I am, and that's what I would be prepared to do for the boxing public, because they pay to come and watch me. And after seeing um, what happened on Saturday night, 80,000 people packed into the National Stadium, you were there for the FA Cup. I mean, do you have now aspirations to headline a big stadium like that uh, in your career? I think that fight there was made um, by the first one. So, you know, it's like Frank was saying earlier, you can never predict in boxing. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you might walk out the door in and you know, bump into someone... Real starting this all of a sudden. Look at Derek Zora and David A. Little thing at a press conference. They sold a football stadium out. So this is something in boxing. I think for for financial wise, you got to have a bit of luck. And you know the right opponent's got to be there for it. And Chris Eubank Jr. For some reason, I haven't picked me out to want it, my name to be mentioned. The public have picked me out to fight him. If they pick Nick Blackwell, John Ryder, fair play, then, but they've picked me out to fight him. But Chris Eubank Jr. is a nobody, so I don't know why they... They just want to see him get beat, he's arrogant. He's just so arrogant. You know, perhaps if he tried to be his own man, people, he might get a few fans. But I bet if you put him on a show, main headline, and you didn't put a good undercard on, you wouldn't get anybody there. Oh, well, that's great, Billy. Thank you so much Thank for Thank you time. very much for your time.